Welcome to this final video in this workshop, Summary and Resources, could also have been called Conclusions. And here I just want to briefly go over all the things we have looked at, and I also want to provide you with some resources if you want to go further. And I want to do this by looking at the learning objectives we set out to work on. And so the idea was that after completing this workshop, you'd be able to describe what programming essentially is about. And well, we talked about this at least implicitly quite a bit. And I would say that it is essentially about solving problems using computers. And it is about thinking computationally. And it is about thinking of the world and thinking of problems in terms of how to implement that in a way so that a machine can work on it. Name it describes some basic programming terminology. Well. We've done this over the last couple of videos and during the live session. So you now know what a variable is. You now know what a function is. And the idea here is just to give you some understanding of the basic terminology and to also take away maybe some of the anxiety that comes with entering a field or learning a new skill that has so much terminology and that has so much, well, overhead, you could almost say. And this is a never ending learning journey. Coding is a never ending learning journey, such as you have to keep learning everything if you want to, if you, if you want to continue with that. But the idea is to just give you a good starting point. Model simple problems in terms of data structures and basic algorithms. And we've also done this, but I want to go back to that pizza example, that very silly pizza example. But even in that very silly example, we had to come up with our own data structure. And then we also came up with a very basic algorithm that helped us to determine how to find the best pizza. And while these were very basic examples, the same kind of logic and the same kind of thinking goes into all sorts of problems, very basic ones, but also very complex ones. And I believe that learning how to program is less about learning a programming language or is less about learning some of the technical details and more about learning to think in terms of this particular logic and to think in terms of data and to think in terms of algorithms. Write basic scripts in Python in order to solve specific problems. If you have done the exercises and if you've played along, you had the chance to do this. And we've also built some of these together. And of course, we haven't worked on like a more serious full on application, but we've only built individual building blocks. But if you're able to do this, then you basically only now need to learn how to stitch these together and then you'll be able to build larger and more robust solutions that look more like applications than just little scripts. Although even very basic scripts can get you quite far. Utilize third-party libraries such as NLTK, Spacey, and Text Directory. Well, these are just three. There are plenty more interesting libraries, but the bottom line is that we have to remember that especially within Python, we can extend the capabilities of the language basically <laughs> basically to infinity. And there are lots of these libraries that are specifically made for analyzing natural languages, and they are very powerful. And it's definitely worth looking at them. And while they have their own individual idiosyncrasies, it's definitely worth exploring them, and particularly Spacey, which I think is one of the most powerful and also the most well documented solutions to many, many, many problems. Construct and apply basic regular expressions. Well, we didn't talk about regular expressions too much, but we saw that Python is very capable of using regular expressions and we can use them on any sort of text. We have looked at utilizing Python for text manipulation, and that is something that works very well and that is actually pretty easy. And so we can use Python to manipulate text files and to manipulate text and to prepare text and to clean text for further analysis. However, while this class has focused a lot on text and on corpus linguistics, I, I definitely want to point out that Python works for all types of data, whether you're working very statistically or whether you're working, for example, also with sound data or with image data, Python is there to help you. And so if you're into that, keep exploring. It's not just for corpus linguists. Utilize Python to perform concordance and frequency analysis. We had a look at that. Would I recommend doing all your concordancing and all your frequency analysis using Python in the future? Probably not. There are specialized tools to do that. But I think we have gained a lot more appreciation for these tools. And we maybe also understood how these tools function and what's under the hood, so to speak. 
automatically annotate texts using spaces. So this is very useful. And maybe you've also learned about a few new types of annotations or tags. And this also, of course, hopefully gives us a better understanding of what is going on if we annotate a text or if we tag a text using some automated system. And it's also very useful to be able to do this on your own. Scrape web data in order to build corpora. So this is very useful technique for not just corpus linguistics, but for many, many things. Um, and it also shows you how you can build programs to really automate things that otherwise might would take a lot of your time. And so that's always a useful thing because coding also is about optimizing things. And then finally, we also computed some basic statistics. And the whole idea here is to show you that Python, similarly to R, can also be used as a very powerful tool for statistical analysis and is widely used in machine learning, is widely used in AI, widely used in data science in general. And it's a very capable language and a very capable also infrastructure if we look at all the libraries that you have available there for free. Now, if you want to go further, you might first need to go back because there are some things you might have missed in this little workshop. The first thing I want to say is go back to the early exercises and reattempt them now that you have a little bit more knowledge. And even if you have a good solution, maybe try to optimize it or maybe try to extend your solution because you learn coding really by coding. Have a look at the command line primer if you haven't done so. So this is not strictly Python, but the command line primer is just a very short document that will teach you a few command line commands. And these are really, really helpful. And then if you want to dig a little bit deeper, also have a look at this bonus notebook called Understanding Classes and Objects. And this hopefully will help you to understand some of the things we did, but really didn't talk about. And I'm trying to, in a not too serious manner, show you a little bit of the underlying architecture of some of the things we've actually worked with. Now let's go even one more step backwards and look at the question, well, do you need how to code? We've just assumed that you that that's something you want to do and that that's something that's good to do. But I just want to briefly touch upon this question that I haven't asked before. And I want to do this by looking at, well, not just this article, but this concept of no code. So TechCrunch had this article this year, well, last year, the no code generation is arriving. And the idea is that there are now these, and with now I mean over the last couple of years, there have appeared a number of tools that allow you to build program-like solutions without actually coding. And also some games, you might have heard of Roblox and some others that allow you to build very impressive things without having deep knowledge about code. And it's a valid question to ask whether it might be enough to just know these platforms and whether there is code, whether whether knowledge about coding or programming is actually required. Now the article has this beautiful answer. Of course, no code tools often require code, or at least sort of deductive logic that is intrinsic to coding. You have to know how to design a pivot table or understand what machine learning capability is and what it might be useful for. You have to think in terms of data and about inputs, transformations, and outputs. So even if these tools strip away the actual coding, the actual writing out code. And even if these tools maybe strip away the fact that you need to learn a programming language and the syntax and, you know, basically the vocabulary, the commands, you still need to think in terms of data. You need to think in terms of inputs, outputs, transformations, and algorithms. And so while they make life a lot easier, the hard part about coding, the thinking part still is there. And so I think it's definitely worthwhile still exploring how to do this the old fashioned way, so to speak. And definitely programming will also stay with us, even though these tools are now there. And even though they are allowing us to do things that we weren't able to do before, well, technically we were able to do it before, but it's now a lot easier and a lot more accessible to lots of people. And that's generally a good thing. So what if you want to learn more about Python? I have a few recommendations. So these are books. So if you want to read books, and these are not necessarily linguistics related, but the first four here are general introductions, and then there's Python for linguists. All of these are good. Um, you can pick any of those. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Python is probably one of the most seminal introductions to the language, not just introductions, but references. So if you are into reading a book about something, Definitely have a look at these. Python for Linguists is also an interesting introduction that you could have a look at. Now, 
if you want to take an online class, there are hundreds of options, and these are just a few I want to basically recommend because I, I like them. So there's Codecademy, which is more generally about coding. Then there's DataCamp, which is fairly pricey, but very good. And DataCamp has various courses on all types of data science problems and topics, both in R and in Python. And they have very good courses on text processing and natural language processing. Then there's the Talk Python training. These are more like beginner classes, but also very well done. And they are very affordable. Then I want to point out Django Girls. These are free courses targeted more towards building websites, if that's something you want to do. But they have a great introductory Python tutorial. They can also recommend Free Code Camp. Um, they have tremendous amounts of very good, decent resources for free. And you can learn not just Python, but also, for example, JavaScript on Free Code Camp. Then there's finally fast.ai, and they have very interesting, a free code first introduction to natural language processing using Python, fairly high level, fairly deep into machine learning and artificial intelligence. But if you're interested in that, definitely have a look at that. And then of course, there are some other resources. And again, there are <laughs> plenty more, but these are just a few I would recommend you checking out. So I can recommend the podcast by Michael Kennedy called Talk Python to Me. And there Michael interviews various people from very different fields about how to use Python, what they do with the language and how to use it in their work. I can also recommend PyCon, and these are the biggest Python conferences. There are various ones, one in Europe, an international one, and so on. And the cool thing is that most of the talks are freely available on YouTube. So you can go there and there's usually also lots of workshops and tutorials also related to language. Then I would recommend having a look at Peter Norwick's PyTudes on GitHub. You can just Google that and there Peter is um, collecting like these interesting little bits and he's solving interesting little coding problems. And he's just a very capable developer. And you can learn a lot about the language and it's also quite fun. He does these challenges and things on his GitHub repository. If you want a more university level course, I could refer you to Stanford NLP's CS 2024N, Natural Language Processing with Deep Learning. And that is a Python and PyTorch based introduction to natural language processing with a very strong focus on deep learning and AI. It's also freely available and it's a fantastic course that's definitely worth checking out. But of course, the internet's full of resources and the best resource probably is also just playing around with this, finding problems and then trying to find solutions to it, uh, having fun doing that and just using the language. This is where I want to end this workshop. I hope you took away something from it and I hope you enjoy exploring. And I hope you also are now motivated to maybe also take the examples we looked at and just explore, have a little bit of fun with it, play with it, and then ultimately maybe start building your own little solutions for your own problems or research tasks using this very interesting language and these new skills you've gained.